live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There have been so many great players in the history of the NFL, but there are only so many jersey numbers that can go around. You can't go around retiring every single jersey number for every good or great player to ever play for your team. That's just not possible. If you did that, you would run out of numbers, and you would be playing with triple digit numbers, and decimals, and fractions, and imaginary numbers. As funny as it would be to have the starting quarterback of a team wearing the number 10i. And there's always going to be some backlash when the number of a great player is put back into circulation. It happened when Michael Irvin's number 88 jersey was immediately reissued to guys like Jackie Harris and Des Bryant. It happened when Maurice Jones-Drew's number 32 jersey was reissued to Tyson Campbell. And there are countless of other examples. Someone's got to be the first player to bite the bullet. Because with very few exceptions, a number can't stay out of circulation forever. No matter how good the player was, that made the number famous. However, there is a right way to do this, and there is a wrong way to do this. And if you want a prime example of the wrong way, then oh boy, we need to talk about the man you've been watching this whole time. This is Minnesota Vikings wide receiver Andre Allison, and in 2007, he joined the team and picked his jersey number. And from that point on, chaos ensued. Allison was the target of a ton of criticism from players and fans for doing this. And then, in one of the stupidest comments I've ever seen a player make, where legitimately nothing good could have come out of it whatsoever, he doubled down on the statement, making him public enemy number one in Minnesota. Let's just say that a lot of doves were crying when Allison thought that he could take the place of the man that donned the number 84 jersey before him. And this is the story behind the biggest number controversy in the over 60 year history of the Minnesota Vikings. Before I talk about the significance of the number, and why Allison received backlash for said number, we need some context to understand just who Andre Allison is. When Allison transferred to East Carolina in 2005 from Georgia Military, a junior college, he was relatively unknown. By the time he left East Carolina after the 2006 season, he was one of the top receivers in Conference USA, and maybe even one of the top receivers in the NCAA. In 2005, he had 83 receptions for 1,024 yards and 7 touchdowns. His 83 receptions ranked 2nd in the conference and 10th in the entire NCAA, and he was one of just 3 players in the conference to have over 1,000 receiving yards. Oddly enough, one of those players was UCF receiver Brandon Marshall, who would go on to have a fantastic career in the NFL, so not bad company to be in by any means. East Carolina had 3 wins combined over the previous 2 seasons. They won 5 games in Allison's first season, and he was maybe the number one reason why that happened. And in 2006, Allison's strong play guided the Pirates to a 7-6 record, giving them their first winning record since 2000, and their first appearance in a bowl game since 2001. That season, Allison once again finished inside the top 5 of the conference in receptions, and led the team in every major statistical receiving category. By the time Allison's two seasons at East Carolina were up, he had 145 receptions for 1,732 yards and 11 touchdowns and he had a ton of accolades and awards to go along with those numbers. He was a first-team All-Conference USA member in 2005, and a second-team member in 2006, becoming just the second receiver in school history at the time to receive Conference USA first-team honors. His 1,024 yards in 2005 was, at the time, the most yards by any receiver in a season in school history. And despite playing just two seasons, his 1,732 yards were, at the time, the third best total in school history, only behind Troy Smith and Mitchell Galloway, with both of those guys spending four seasons with the program. His 83 receptions in 2005, at the time, was the second most by a player in school history, only behind Terrence Cooper, who had 87 in 2003, and his 145 career receptions was the second most in school history at the time, only behind Jason Nichols at 152, who played four seasons. Basically, Andre Allison was really good. He might have been the best receiver in program history at the time. And in 2007, with pick number 146 in the NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings decided to draft the guy, making him the only East Carolina player taken in the draft, and making him the first East Carolina receiver taken 
since Troy Smith back in 1999. All right, so now Andre Allison is a member of the Vikings. However, there's a problem. In college, he wore the number two jersey. You can't wear that in the NFL as a receiver. At least, you couldn't back in 2007. No problem, he's just going to wear the number 14 jersey for the preseason. However, by the end of the preseason, he wasn't feeling the number 14 jersey. He wanted a different number. And after tight end Steven Spock got cut, Allison saw an opportunity. Because now, the 84 jersey was open. And Allison was dead set on wearing the number 84. So much so that the moment Spock got cut, and the number became available, he switched, replacing the one on the front of his jersey with an 8. And as you might have been able to tell, this was about to cause some major problems. Because Allison was the first player on the Vikings to wear the number 84 in a regular season game since, well, one of the greatest receivers of all time did. The man you're watching right now is a receiver by the name of Randy Moss. You may have heard of him before. I don't think I'm going to be saying anything controversial here when I say that Randy Moss was a great receiver. Heck, he's regarded by many as one of the greatest receivers in the history of the sport. Moss played for the Vikings from 1998 to 2004, and in that stretch, he had 574 receptions for 9,142 yards and 90 touchdowns, making it to five Pro Bowls and being named the first team All-Pro three times by the Associated Press. He had what many argue is the greatest season by any rookie receiver in the history of the NFL, as in 1998, he was a big reason why the Vikings went 15-1, as not only did he win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but he led the entire NFL with 17 receiving touchdowns, even getting some MVP votes along the way. He led the league in receiving touchdowns three times with the Vikings, and by the time his first stint in Minnesota ended, he was second in franchise history in every major statistical receiving category, only behind future Hall of Famer Chris Carter. As a side note, to learn more about the legendary career of Chris Carter, click the card in the upper right corner. However, let's just say that Moss and the Vikings did not exactly split on the best of terms. I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics because that's not the point of the video, but by this point, the Vikings were fed up with Moss and his antics, most notably when he left the field during a loss against Washington before the game was even over. As quarterback Dante Culpepper said on Moss, he's my good friend, but you almost get to thinking that maybe enough is enough, and maybe the Vikings organization has had enough. The Vikings traded him after the 2004 season to the Oakland Raiders, ending his incredibly successful but incredibly chaotic seven-year stint with the team. And as great as Moss was, for a variety of reasons, with his exit from the team definitely being one of them, and the fact that he only played seven seasons being another one, the Vikings decided not to retire his number, and to reissue the number 84 jersey. No one wore the jersey in 2005, but Billy McMullen was issued the number in 2006. However, he was cut during the preseason, so no one wore the number. The 2007 season with Andre Allison was going to be the first year since Moss left that a player would don the number 84 jersey during a regular season game. And to this day, there is still some controversy about why Moss doesn't have his number retired. Even Randy Moss himself wonders why his jersey isn't retired. However, the Vikings typically do not retire numbers as they are rather selective with what jerseys they choose to take out of circulation. The Vikings have only retired six numbers in their franchise's history. Four of those guys, Fran Tarkenton, Mick Tinglehoff, Chris Carter, and Alan Page, are in the Hall of Fame. One of them, Jim Marshall, should be in the Hall of Fame, and played 19 seasons and started 270 games with the Vikings. And the other one, Corey Stringer, tragically died during training camp. There are many great players to play for the Vikings, even Hall of Famers, who do not have their number retired by the team. Chris Stolman played 10 seasons in Minnesota, made 6 Pro Bowls there, and is in the Hall of Fame. Not retired. Carl Eller played 15 seasons in Minnesota, made 6 Pro Bowls there, and is in the Hall of Fame. Not retired. Randall McDaniel played 12 seasons in Minnesota, made 11 Pro Bowls there, and is in the Hall of Fame. Not retired. You get the idea. The Vikings decided a long time ago that number 84 was not worthy of a jersey retirement. Someone was going to have to be the first to take the number out of circulation, and it just so happened to be Andre Allison. Now, if this was just about Allison wearing number 84, this wouldn't be an issue. In fact, it would be a non-story and I wouldn't be making this video. 
but naturally, reporters asked him why he made the switch, and why he was taking over the number made famous by Randy Moss. And Allison talked about the negative publicity he got from it, even from his teammates. As Allison said, they've been giving me hell about it. It's alright though, I don't mind. But then, he talked about what the number 84 jersey meant to him. Now, there is a right way to answer this question. You could say that you love watching Moss play, and that you're wearing the number 84 jersey to honor him. Scott Mitchell tried that strategy to calm the criticism he got from the Ravens when he decided to wear the number 19 jersey previously held by Johnny Unitas. You can learn more about that controversy by clicking the card in the upper right corner. You could say that you hope to carry a tradition of great receivers to wear the number 84 jersey. You could say that you asked for permission, and the Vikings granted it to you. You could even go as far as saying that you thought the number looked cool, or that it had a special meaning to you because it didn't set up to something, or because a friend wore that number, or because it's your lucky number. Literally, come up with anything. Well, Allison came up with something, all right. He came up with literally the worst possible response to the question. Think of how badly you could butcher this, and I promise you, it doesn't come close to what Allison said. Because when a reporter asked Allison why he was wearing the number 84 jersey, he said, and I quote, If Randy Moss was so great, they would have retired his number. I'm sorry, what? You could have said literally anything as to why you're wearing the number 84 jersey, and you decide to use that to say that Randy Moss wasn't that great? First off, even if Moss was the greatest receiver in NFL history, and even if he had 30,000 receiving yards by this point, the numbers still wouldn't be retired because Moss was still playing, and not a single team retires a number of an active player. It's obvious why they don't. You want the player there for his retirement jersey ceremony, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to retire a jersey while he's playing for a different team and won't be able to make the ceremony. That's like saying that you want to wear the number 12 jersey on the Patriots because it's not retired yet. And you say that Brady wasn't great because otherwise, his number would have been retired by now. He's still playing! Literally the moment Brady retires for good, unless he murders someone, his jersey is going up in the rafters, you absolute idiot! Not saying that was going to happen to Moss, because clearly it wasn't, but anyone with a brain knows that you don't retire an active player's jersey. But awful logic aside, and the fact that Allison equates great to having your number retired, meaning that, excluding Corey Stringer since that was a unique circumstance, there have only been five great players in franchise history, and Randall McDaniel, arguably the greatest guard of all time, was not one of them. You are a fifth round rookie. You have done literally nothing in the NFL. You came into the season on the bubble. And here you are, saying to the world that Randy Moss was not great? You're saying that Randy Moss, the man who averaged 82 catches, 1,300 yards, and 13 touchdowns in his entire career with the Vikings, wasn't that great? You're saying that Randy Moss, one of just five players in the history of the game at the time, to lead the NFL in receiving touchdowns three times, alongside Chris Carter, Don Hudson, Jerry Rice, and Terrell Owens, wasn't that great? You're saying that Randy Moss, the man who had the second most receiving yards of any player in NFL history at the time through his first seven seasons, only behind Torrey Holt, wasn't that great? You're saying that Randy Moss, the man who had the second most receiving touchdowns of any player in NFL history at the time through his first seven seasons, only behind Jerry Rice, wasn't that great? Are you out of your mind? Why the heck would you even say this? Way to alienate your fan base, and way to make people think you're a cocky, out of touch rookie. It's stupid, but it's one thing to compare your skill set to Randy Moss. It's another thing to flat out say, yeah, Calm down about the number, because he wasn't that great. Come on. And when you consider what Andre Allison ended up doing in the NFL when all was said and done, it is even more hysterical. If you're watching this video, congratulations! You have as many receiving touchdowns in your career as Allison had. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Zip. Zero. He finished his career with 18 receptions for 231 yards. That was it, as he was out of the league after the 2008 season never playing for the Vikings or any team in a regular season game again. Oh, and he had Butterfingers as well, fumbling four times despite minimal touches. And for some perspective, in 2007, Randy Moss had more touchdowns, having 23 with the Patriots in a single season record that still stands today, than Allison had career receptions. 23 to 18. So yeah, maybe not the best idea to say that Randy Moss isn't that great. 
maybe not the best idea to get the fans to immediately hate you and diss a team legend in the process. So what's the moral of the story? If you're going to pick a jersey number of a player that was great, you're going to get backlash no matter what, and you just got to face the music. But eventually, the music dies down through the passage of time if you can make the number your own, provided that you say the right things. Heck, you could say literally nothing. Just don't do what Andre Allison did. If you're joining a new team and haven't proven anything, don't disrespect one of the greatest to ever do it by saying he wasn't that great. Because today, when Vikings fans think of the number 84, whether they think of Randy Moss or Gene Washington if you're going old school, or Irv Smith Jr. if you're thinking today, I can tell you this much, they sure as heck aren't thinking about Andre freaking Allison. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9. To see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.